Well, it's redefined life as we know it for months. And while many hear the message loud and clear, others are operating with blinders on and masks off. COVID-19 isn't going anywhere anytime soon. And as the second wave begins to swell, so does defiance and disregard and deniers are dying. He was in the prime of his life, in shape, and a prime example of how anyone can become a statistic. Ukrainian fitness influencer Dmitry Stuzuk, with nearly 1.1 million followers, thought COVID-19 does not exist. After a trip to Turkey, he notified his fans of his symptoms and his experience. He wrote, the hospital is completely filled with people, some of them being treated in corridors. I was one who thought COVID does not exist until I got sick. After over a week in the hospital, his ex-wife Sophia revealed his heart isn't coping and later heartbroken. The grim reality, Dimitri died. Their three small children, the youngest nine months old, now fatherless. Blatant disregard likely led to the death of beloved pastor. The headline hard to read. A Florida couple thought COVID was a hoax. They both got the virus and the wife is dead. Her husband, a rideshare driver, went on record saying, many people still think that the coronavirus is a fake crisis, which at one time I did too. I felt that it was blown out of proportion and it wasn't that serious. Don't be foolish like I was. Some call it a scam demi. Tony Green did until a party he pushed infected 14 family members and killed three. That guilt just sits. While hindsight won't help those lost, can raising the volume reach deaf ears? When I heard about the death of that fitness influencer, I gotta say it stopped me in my tracks. My first guest story is eerily similar. He's a fitness instructor and motivational speaker from Stanton, California. Ruben, thanks for joining me today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me on the show. You said you would come on and speak candidly because you, at some point, were adamant that COVID-19 wasn't real. Help me understand what puts you in that mindset. That competitive mindset of I could overcome anything. And it's that, that pride that I had, and I'm sure a lot of people have, because I still see a lot of people that haven't taken it seriously, which is unfortunate. So you end up getting sick, and did you go right away to get care, or did you think, ah, oh, it's not a big deal, another situation, I'll get over it? Yeah, no, right away, um, once the symptoms came, I went to my old, you know, because I'm Hispanic, so I went to the teas, the chicken soup, uh, ginger tea, turmeric, all the stuff that worked, apple cider vinegar, and the symptoms continued for close to 10 days. Fever was there, and, and I remember eating Rocky Road, and, and the taste, there was no taste, so... Mm. So that's when I checked into the hospital, went into emergency on a Sunday afternoon. Now, did you ever go to the, the gym while you were having these signs and symptoms of COVID-19? Or, you know, was there a time where you thought, oh, it's okay, and you were still out in public? About three days before I checked in, and I remember walking into the gym, and I thought it was a cold. I never knew I had the, the COVID. How sick were you, actually? Take me through kind of what your course was like. Okay, so, um, Sunday I checked in, Sunday afternoon. Um, I checked in and they did x-rays and said, you have pneumonia. So they said, we're going to have to uh, admit you. So they admit me on Sunday afternoon. Sunday evening, they already had me on the respirator, wow. on the ventilator machine, because the doctor said he hasn't seen them, somebody crash so quickly. And I know the primary for years. We used to work out together since 1996. So once I uh, was on the ventilator, a couple hours later, they come back in and say, you know, you're not getting any better. Your lungs are collapsing. We're going to have to intubate you. So that means they're going to have to put a tube down my throat because my lungs were collapsing. And they had to induce me into a coma. And I asked the doctor, what are my options? And he says, you have none. And I was induced to a coma for five days. On a Wednesday, they pulled me out quickly, gave me more antibiotics, put me back in, and in the morning that day was on a Wednesday. They called my sister and says, you know what? He has 40% chance to make it. He's not reacting to the, the antibiotics. Wait, wait. Did they tell and you this, the, by the way? Were you told of this? No, or I was just, out. You were out of it, was, in a coma. They told my sister this. She told me this after. And even the doctor said, if I didn't come in that Sunday, he says, you wouldn't have woke up Monday. Wow. 